straight from I went straight from high school and joined the Nation of Islam. Never had no real job or nothing. I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing in, in my pocket. Those brothers knew. I, I look, I'm, age, I'm a teenager. Those brothers flaunted their money, their big cars. I'm their brother. We are taught in the nation of Islam, share and share alike. If my brother has a, 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 a bowl of bean soup, half of that belongs to my brother. That never was practiced. These brothers and sisters would come in the nation of Islam, flaunt their money, flaunt their cars, flaunt what they got, and they know brothers like me and sisters that was there. We didn't have nothing. Nobody made no attempt to give me not one dime. Everything I got, I had to sell the newspaper, sell the pies, uh, hustle to get what I needed. I got not one dime from nobody. There was a time where there was no real bus route to the mosque. So I stayed in the mosque. They didn't even offer me a bed that wasn't being used because they told me I couldn't pay the rent. So I would stay in the mosque and sleep in the basement and there's no bed and I slept on top of pickle barrels. I would lay like four pickle barrels and just lay my body. I didn't want to lay actually on the basement floor because might be some rats or something running around. I didn't want, no, you know, I didn't want that kind of action. So... I laid on top of the pickle barrels and laid on my hand and I, I, that's how I lived. And they never gave me nothing except some burnt up bean pies. They made a batch of bean pies for the East St. Louis school system and a lot of those pies got burnt. They didn't look good so they was rejected. And that's when they offered me. I never got a good pie unless I bought it. They're going to give me the crap that you... This is how you treat your brother. But I kept the faith because it's not about them. It's about Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I kept the faith. But it just... This, this was not brotherhood. This was not sisterhood. This was not what I thought it would be. I saw Minister Farrakhan out there getting richer and wealthier. And he's bragging on himself. And he's making himself... Put himself on the level of... Elijah Muhammad. That's not the teachings. There's nowhere in the teachings where there's some third wheel where Elijah Muhammad taught some mysterious third man in the future supposed to come and take his place and lead us to the Holy Land. He did that. He changed and flip-flopped the teachings and made him put himself in a position where he's Mr. Divine. I didn't like that. That's not the teachings. I've been exposed to the teachings. I've been reading Elijah Muhammad teachings since I was eight or nine years old. I know better. I saw Minister Farrakhan doing this. He trying to, really he's trying to make, make the Muslims Christians. And that's really what he has done today. They are more like Christians than followers of Elijah Muhammad, Muslims. Minister Farrakhan has created this holy trinity. Master Farah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, and he's the Holy Ghost. The third in line. And he got all these people looking to him like he's God. He's just a man to me. I never looked at him as other than just a man. And that's one of the reasons why I just had to let that stuff go. And I saw, and as I began to experience life, I really began to question God. God haven't done nothing for me then or now. You live and you die. And I accept that as a reality. I'm not waiting on spooks and spirits and tripping on these gods and, and, and demons. I'm not into that. So I had to leave the nation of Islam because not only did I have a problem with Minister Farrakhan, I got a problem with God, period. And you know something, I say this too. I really truly feel if Malcolm was here because Malcolm was a self-thinker. Malcolm was logical. Malcolm was analytical. Malcolm used common sense. I think if Malcolm had lived, Malcolm would have been like me. He would have reached those conclusions. Because how long are you going to keep waiting on this God to do something for you? 
What was God, Malcolm, when he was in the, in the Audubon ballroom? Why this God didn't do nothing to protect you from them pieces of trash that shot you down in front of your wife and your children? I got a problem with that. I got a problem when I was incarcerated and I cried out to God, never showed up, never helped me. I got a problem with that. And maybe one day uh, you might feel it, 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 it'll come it on your heart and have passion. Maybe we can talk about that, my experience in that, and make a documentary of my experience in a mental facility, which many of us can relate to because so many of our people are rotting and going to waste in these institutions. And that's another thing. The state of Mississippi, as a power, we have the power to probably get some of our people out of these situations. We can go to California and get some of our people and rehabilitate them like the Nation of Islam used to do back in the day. It's a lot of things you can do when you have power, but when you don't have no power, you can't do nothing except sit around here and talk about black power and cry and whimper and complain. And nobody's impressed by somebody that don't have no power. Eh, yeah, just cry and ignore. But I thank you so much for listening. I thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, be a participate in this wonderful documentary to give tribute and remembrance to this man called Malcolm X Shabazz. May he rest in peace. Uh, respect due to his family, his grandson, who also was trying to follow in his footsteps. Unfortunately, he was murdered and he could not continue the work. But we're here. We love Malcolm. And as long as we breathe, Malcolm X will still be alive. I thank you so much. And as, as in parting, as the Nation of Islam always say, I wish you love, peace, assalamu alaikum. And that's it. Is that good enough? That was a